Apostoliclet sublimitas et miseria hominis of the Holy Father Francis and the fourth centenary of the birth of blessed Pascal. The grandeur and misery of man. This paradox is central to the thought and enduring message of blessed Pascal, born four centuries ago on June the 19th of 1623, in Clermont-Ferrand in saint paul France. From childhood, Pascal devoted his life to the pursuit of truth. By the use of reason, he sought its traces in the fields of mathematics, geometry, physics, and philosophy, making remarkable discoveries and attaining great fame even at an early age. Yet he was not content with those achievements. In a century of great advances in many fields of science, accompanied by a growing spirit of philosophical and religious skepticism, Blaise Pascal proved to be a tireless seeker of truth, a restless spirit open to evil, new and greater horizons. Pascal's brilliant and inquisitive mind never ceased to ponder the question, ancient yet never new, that wells up in the human heart, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? Psalm 8 verse 5 This question has perplexed men and women of every time and place, every culture, language and religion. What is man in nature? Pascal asks, nothing with respect to the infinite, yet everything with respect to nothing. The question had been posed by the psalmist in the context of the history of love between God and his people. A history culminating in the incarnation of the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, whom the Father gave up to forsakeness in order to crown him with glory and honor above every creature. Verse 6. To this question raised in a language so different from that of mathematics and geometry, Pascal continued to devote his attention. For this reason, I believe that it is fitting to describe Pascal as a man marked by a fundamental attitude of awe and openness to all reality, openness to other dimensions of knowledge and life, openness to others, openness to society. For example, in 1661, he developed in Paris the first public transport system in history the five penny coaches. If I mention this at the beginning of this letter, it is to make clear that neither his conversion to Christ, which began with the, with the night of fire on November the 23 of 1654, nor his masterful intellectual defense of the Christian faith made him any less a man of his time. He continued to be concerned with the questions that troubled his age and with the material needs of all the members of the society in which he lived. This openness to the world around him kept him concerned for others, even in his final illness, at only 39 years of age. At this, the last stage of his earthly pilgrimage, he is reported to have said, If the physicians tell the truth and God grants that I recover from his sickness, I am resolved to have no other work or occupation for the rest of my life except to serve the poor. It is moving to realize that in the last days of his life, so great a genius as Blaise Pascal saw nothing more pressing than the need to devote his energies to work to works of mercy. 
The sole object of scripture is charity, he says. I am pleased that on this, the fourth centenary of his birth, God's providence grants me this opportunity to pay homage to Pascal and to recall those aspects of his life and thought that I deem helpful, helpful to encourage Christians in our day and their contemporaries of goodwill in the pursuit of authentic happiness. For all people seek to be happy. This is true without exception, whatever the different means they employ. All tend to the same goal. For centuries after his birth, Pascal remains our traveling companion, accompanying our quest of true happiness, and through the gift of faith, our humble and joyful recognition of the crucified and risen Lord. A man in love with Christ who speaks to everyone. If Blaise Pascal can attract everyone, it is above all because he spoke so convincingly of our human condition. Yet it would be mistaken to see in him merely an insightful observer of human behavior. His monumental pensée, some of whose individual aphorisms remain famous, cannot really be understood unless we realize that Jesus Christ and sacred scripture are both their center and the key to their understanding. For if Pascal proposed to speak of man and God, it was because he had arrived at the certainty that not only do we know God solely through Jesus Christ, but we know ourselves solely through Jesus Christ. We do not know life and death except through Jesus Christ. Apart from Jesus Christ, we understand neither our life nor our death, neither God nor ourselves. Hence, without the scriptures which speak solely of Jesus Christ, we know nothing and we see only darkness. If this daring statement is to be understood by all, and not considered a purely dogmatic asser assertion incomprehensible to those who do not share the Church's faith, or a disparagement of the legitimate scope of natural reason, it needs to be clarified. <laughs>